When you're working with the person, as soon as there's a teeny little shift, that's when I might say my famous, my infamous, that's it. I'm just noticing that. What's that feel like? So again, it's, it's being very delicate, being very precise and, and gentle. Now, syndromes specifically always will have the autonomic nervous system as the element that is driving those symptoms. So that no matter which syndrome you have, the root cause of all of them comes back to this autonomic nervous system and being able to learn how to shift those states. These are my three elements to the healing journey. Now, there are other modalities that are helpful but these are essential, meaning if you don't get one of these pieces in, you won't reach your full potential on your healing journey. We have the biology piece, and we are here discussing a lot of that biology piece, which includes the effects of trauma on our biology. And now that biology will keep us stuck in a trauma response. There are the thoughts and the beliefs, and we had our narratives and the thoughts and beliefs can be a contributing factor to keeping us stuck in our physical illnesses that are a reflection of the trauma response. And then we have this body piece. And for me, this body piece is the somatic work. And somatic work for me refers to the tissues, the body, and the body holds memories. It's not just our brain. We have a whole implicit memory that's in our body. And as I started to piece this together, I came across also Dr. Porges' work with the polyvagal theory. But even before that, I had started to map out my own energy levels as I was trying to figure out what was wrong, <laughs> why was my body doing this, and what, do I, what did I need to do to get my body back into a place of health? Now, Dr. Peter Levine hardly needs any introduction. He holds a PhD in medical and biological physics at the University of California at Berkeley. And then in 1978, that's when he met Dr. Steve Porges, and they found a common language and, and common understanding of bottom-up approach, which is very much what somatic work is, bottom-up approach rather than top-down approach, and has since become the developer of somatic experiencing, is the founder of Ergos Institute of Somatic Education, and is the founder and advisor for Somatic Experiencing Institute. When it comes to syndromes, what would be something that you would want conventional medicine to understand about syndromes? I mean, you know, syndromes are these symptoms, usually physical or often physical, that uh, people have and they have no uh, apparent cause. And often they're sent from doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist. So the people who had fibromyalgia, what we would call fibromyalgia, well, those people would be referred to a rheumatologist people with migraines to a neurologist, people with irritable bowel to a gastroenterologist. And you should always, I mean, if you're working with a client, you should always make sure that there's not a possibility that something else, something medically, physically is occurring. But given the absence of that, the question is then, how do you work with people with these kind of mutating symptoms? And even those that are, for example, like lupus, which is pretty common, and especially, especially uh, among women, it affects any number of different organs at different times. And it's often quite difficult to diagnose, but you have to be able to diagnose it so you can do something about it. Now, there are medical things that are done, such as the use of steroids, you know, that hopefully is only uh, used for relatively short periods of time. But what does it take to get at the end underlying condition? And in my thinking, my model, this is due to hypothalamic pituitary dysregulation, autonomic dysregulation, sometimes called uh, dysautonomic term it was given to in, in the late 1940s. But again, they rarely can find anything medically wrong. And you should try anything, of course. Sometimes people get help, for example, with alternative methods, so acupuncture, Chinese medicine, homeopathy, and so forth. Of course, it's always good to find more than one thing, because then they will often synergize. If they get some kind of support, say from Chinese medicine, acupuncture, homeopathy, 
then the work you can do with somatic experiencing would be really to work with the core dysregulation and to find a way to bring it back into balance. So with the people that you've worked with, when you are kind of working with their system, what's the sense that you get of how many years this has been building up for them in terms yeah. of the chronic stress and the trauma? Well, that's an important question. Again, so often people have had really early childhood adversity think about the adverse a studies adverse childhood experience. it's pretty well accepted that early events like this or early difficulties really have a, a long-term effect on people and certainly in my opinion these very often contribute to these kinds of syndromes so as we look on the medical side of things and we see the trends the numbers in lupus for example increasing continuing to increase over the years significantly, right. even in young people in the African-American yeah. population. Yeah. What would you, like, what would be your message for your family physician, your regular family or internal right. medicine physician who's seen these patients well, coming in? Yeah. I mean, to refer them to somebody who can work with those underlying factors, and that may mean referring them to a, quote, alternative practitioners, but we're asking the physicians to really look and see if there's likely to be some kind of organic cause. Again, when nothing shows up, I think it's really important when the physician says there's things that may be going on that's underneath here, that if we can heal that, if we can find inner balance, that can make a big difference. And here are some referrals of people practitioners who have, have been in, helping improve some of my other patients. And you use that word balance quite a bit when you talk about the work, the somatic work that you yeah. do with the syndromes. Tell us more about balance and what that means to, to be balancing the system and then even tuning. What does it mean to tune sure. the system in relationship to syndrome? Yeah. Well, this is a little bit complicated, but when people are dysregulated, everything seems to be out of order in the external world. But really, it's what's going on inside. A lot of what we do in SC, for example, is about restoring regulation, restoring inner regulation. And again, while you're doing that, it's very common, it's not at all uncommon, that memories come up, maybe not conscious memories, but, you know, implicit memories, emotional memories, uh, other uh, procedural memories, body memories, and so forth, you know, and because when we're, we're stuck with these kind of symptoms, uh, we kind of have to work around them so that they're no longer kicking dust in our face. You know? A skilled practitioner, you have to work very precisely, very delicately. You know, a principle in somatic experiencing is titration. You don't really push the person into their traumas. You just help them to touch into them and then to integrate it into their bodies, into their, into their experience. What are the other, I don't know, mistakes that you see some somatic experiencing practitioners doing around syndromes without knowing better? Yeah. That we would want to know better. Well, I mean, I can think of a couple of things right off. Changing their breathing voluntarily, because breathing is not meant to be voluntary, it's an involuntary function. To maybe try to see what memories might be underlying, rather than just working on the symptoms. Uh, or they even said maybe better, the energy that's locked in those symptoms. Because that's really the key. The energy gets locked in there, it gets compressed, it gets held. And people are terrified of it releasing. Because if it releases all at once, they might easily become overwhelmed. And being overwhelmed, really, the, the brain can't distinguish that from the original trauma. So again, it's really absolutely essential to just touch into these experiences, to let them play through to let the procedural memories integrate, complete, and let the other kinds of memories, the emotional memories, be there, especially memories of, of grief and loss. 
One of the things I've always been curious about in the United States, I, I call it virulent positivism. We're never supposed to admit pain, or especially grief. So somehow that will make us seem weak. And that's the last thing we want to do, but it's the thing that we have to do. So I think that's one of the things also that really takes more refined work, more precise work. Also working with uh, some variables like shame that maybe comes up. And shame and grief can very often can link together. So again, you want to, again, just if, if, if shame does come up, you want to touch into it and again in a very gentle way. I woke up this morning, I thought, where am I going with all this? Obviously, I'm, I'm really gaining as a practitioner. And to tell you the truth, in this particular uh, module, I've been totally remolded. It's, it's a whole new direction for me working with other people. And particularly when I work with the young adolescents at the therapeutic boarding school who have attachment issues, who have such major mental health issues that they're required to be away from home in a therapeutic residential school, struggling with these intense issues. And so I'm just, and so this module has really helped me out so much and, and I, so thank you for that. The change in my practice has been that I notice myself being able to be present, much more present and open-hearted and feel comfortable with my most severely attachment injured patients who are, you know, struggling with addictions, acting out and staying present and comfortable in my own body and also conveying to them some of the tools, the basic tools, and present with them while they're doing them with me in the sessions. And it just brings tears to my eyes because I feel and I hear them tell me that they feel safe at the end of the session because these people have not experienced safety in their bodies. And I have to say, our world is still behind in understanding addictions. This is, the nervous system is so delicate, but it can be rewired.